Okay, so let's move to the sixth reading, arbitrage pricing theory and multi-factor risk models of risk and return. It's again fairly simple. There are some complicated terms. I'll simplify it down. Just keep marking whatever I mark and keep underlining. It'll become simple then. So the, uh, in 1976, Professor Stephen Ross, he developed an alternative to the capital asset pricing model called the arbitrage pricing theory. What he says is that what arbitrage means is that there will be perceived uh, there will be pricing errors and you can capitalize on those pricing errors but this model assumes that there are no pricing errors and even if there are they will be quickly evaporated due to the uh, market participants so what it says is that let's say you expect uh, the market expects the gdp forecast to be so and so the inflation to be so and so and it expects a return from this stock now what if the GDP and the inflation forecast are not what the market expected. So there will be some variation and what will be the effect of that variation on the stock? That is the crux of this chapter. You will see that thing, same thing being repeated in different ways over and over again. <clears throat> so in this first part over here, the equation that I've taken, the return is equal to the expected return, whatever you expect, plus beta. So beta was earlier sensitivity of the stock price to the market. Here, beta one would be the sensitivity of the stock price to factor one. What is factor one? Let's say GDP, for example, plus sensitivity to factor two into factor two, let's say inflation, and up to k factor n factors plus uh, an e part, which is the unsystematic or specific risk of the company which cannot be modeled with any factors or usually cannot be modeled with any factors or beta. That's, that's, that, that's the crux of the chapter. Now, the three simplistic assumptions, market participants are seeking to maximize their returns. Obviously, markets are frictionless, that is efficient markets, no taxes, no transaction cost. And there are no arbitrage opportunities available. It's called arbitrage pricing theory, but there are no arbitrage opportunities available. So arbitrage pricing theory does not give you all the factors that are required. Okay, so uh, Chen, Roll, and Ross, it says over here, they proposed four basic factors for an ABT. The first is the spread between short-term and long-term interest rates, that is the yield curve, because if this spread is increasing, that means in the, the long run rates are increasing, which means there is long run infl inflation expectation, or if the, it is uh, narrowing, then there are different kinds of expectations. So each factor needs to be considered separately, and they propose some factors because otherwise it was very vague, APT, what are the factors people were asking. It was good because it left people to companies to consider factors that affect them specifically, but it was bad also in a way. The second one is expected versus unexpected inflation. Third one is industrial production levels. And the fourth one would be the spread between low risk and high risk corporate bond yields. It's a few of them are pretty repetitive. <clears throat> so then later on, we'll study better models as well that were developed. <clears throat> Again, this is the same thing. Multi-factor model input, blah, blah, blah. Calculating expected return. Multi-factor model. So here they've given an example that the expected return is 10%, beta is 2%, expected GDP is 3.2%. So this means that if the GDP is, let's say 3.5%, so the return would be higher by 3.5 minus 3.2 into 2, which is 0.6%. It would be, return would be 10.6% plus an error term, whatever that is. Or the other way around, same thing. And what they've done is uh, separately also calculated the error term because in one way they got the total return and then it which came to 8.43 percent and uh, they subtracted it from some figure that uh, other figure that they got and they got this systematic part as well unsystematic part as well you just go through it accounting for correlation so the 
again uh, just like CAPM this says that there is a well diversified portfolio and unsystematic risk will not be rewarded a very well diversified portfolio will only have that, uh, systematic risk and again if you uh, invest in multiple assets let's say bond stocks uh, uh, crypto now land etc then uh, the your portfolio is even better diversified so now how do you hedge exposures to multiple risk factors that is you combine different kinds of assets with different wages weight weightages so as to get the desired beta for an asset for example if in the previous question we saw that the uh, gdp beta was 2 which was very high what if the gdp uh, actual figure comes down to be very low instead of 3.2% it comes to 2% then your return will fall by 2.4% which is a big number so uh, what if the company wants to hedge against this factor so let's say there are three portfolios one has a beta of beta gdp of 0.5 the second one is 0.5 and this is the given figures you can read through it now what if i want to eliminate gdp as a factor in my model so since they are equal you long the first one and short the second one or you short the second one and long the first one as simple as that because then the they will be offset diversified away netted away if you want to uh, diversify or hedge your fact, uh, exposure to consumer sentiment then you do the same thing with one and three sh long one short the other and and you how do you decide which to long and which to short for example if let's say in the gdp case if you are long uh, take going long on one and short on two then you will be long on consumer uh, sentiment and you will be short on unemployment surprise factor so you you need to consider these other elements and if you want to take this risk instead of the gdp risk and you just don't do this to hedge you do this to uh, exploit arbitrage opportunities as well because of the expected return on these portfolios you you expect different kinds of returns on different portfolios and uh, different factors and sensitivities as well obviously there is model risk uh, there are costs there are taxes but we are assuming a an efficient perfect market so now we move on to the pharma factor uh, pharma french three factor model so pharma and french gave us three factors to serve in the multi factor model the first is firm size second is risk premium and third one is the ratio of the book value and the market value first one small minus big we do small minus big smb and small firms are riskier and give a higher return large firms are less riskier and give a lower return the second point risk premium is just the market risk premium rm minus rf and the third, uh, so if your market return is low this means your firm will do usually not do as well it is basically a, a measure of you can say systematic risk but there are unsystematic parts as well but those can be diversified away we are considering a diversified portfolio and the third one is the ratio of the book value to the market value which tells us if a stock is either value stock or growth stock usually value stocks have low market value and growth stocks have a high market value the same thing is explained over here in a large jar way and there might be other additions to this robust minus weak conservative minus aggressive just read through it nothing much to explain uh, just one addition that we had been taught was the of uh, a momentum factor a fourth factor called momentum which was very important that if the stock has been increasing it usually should continue to increase or if it has been falling it should continue to fall so that was a fourth important factor that was considered and this was the crux of this chapter just go through it once nothing much to see just remember the small minus big and book value or market value thing if it is value stock growth stock what will happen and just see a numerical over here it will be clear